All right, good afternoon, uh, YouTube and uh, my YXE community. I um, want to do a video, something that gets brought up often, is how to make a set of spark plug wires for your YXE if you want to run uh, external coils and you're not running um, the OEM coil pack. This uh, Here's one that's set up. Um, the reason for this, if you're running ethanol or methanol and a lot of boost uh, sometimes you know a lot of boost with a big turbo you know making a lot of horsepower or whatever um, you need more spark energy so this is parts i'm putting together for our new setup on the shop car um, these are aem ign 1a coils that we have been running these are used i just uh, mounting them differently um, this coil has a built-in igniter that's why it's a smart coil the other coil i used often on these are the aem dumb coil um, which does not have an igniter so that's a simpler connection this one in any of these that you do you have to do some wiring so just fair warning these are a six pin connector um, for the igniter circuit that's in there the dumb coil is a three pin connector which is essentially um, the two wires that are going to your current coil pack and then an extra ground um, so those are a little bit easier to swap over you have to use the dumb coil if you have um, an mtron because that's uh, that ecu has a built-in igniter if you're running a motec or a haltech or an ecu master one of these other ones um, you have the option of running uh, smart coil. So that's what we use with our M130 MoTeC. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk about how to get to right here, spark plug wire. Um, these start life as, let's see, VMS racing 10 millimeter silicone plug wires. Uh, you can see this is for a Honda B16 or B18, um, you know, Honda Civic. Uh, just type in Honda V16 spark plug wire, and this is what you'll come up with. You can see the length of the insulator is pretty long. You can see when I put it in here and I engage my spark plug that I have this big gap here. So this is kind of where everybody gets lost. Um, and I'm trying to do this in one take. So I've staged these wires. I've got one complete one here. Um, first step is you're gonna stick it in the hole and take a measurement with your whatever you want to measure with this with um, I have a measurement of one inch and one eighth so 1.125 uh, is what I need to take out of that insulator so next step is you come over here and you disassemble this thing so you take this rubber boot off that just uh, slides down just pull it off of this end and then you need to get this 90 degree boot off of the insulator. Um, they put glue in here just a little bit. So what I do is I take a really tiny little screwdriver, slip it in there, kind of work around the wire, maybe peel it up a little bit with a little squirt of WD-40 and just kind of work it to break that glue loose on the inside of this boot. Uh, there's no glue on this side, but again, you can go in there with a screwdriver tiny tiny screwdriver carefully because you don't want to nick the wire um, and a little bit of WD-40 work it on that end and then if you do it correctly this thing will just pull right up um, if it's not wanting to pull up it means there's still some glue holding on so you know you need to get in all the way down in there screwdriver kind of work your way around to break all that that silicone glue free so then you slide this uh, 90 degree boot up out of the way and you're going to put a mark on there, which you can't really see, but I marked that at an inch and an eighth from the top. Next step is you need one of these uh, copper tube tubing cutters from Home Depot or wherever you want to buy it, Ace Hardware. And you are going to engage, you know, get that in there just like you're cutting tube. Work your way around that plastic insulator and cut this piece. So the reason I use that tube cutter is because you know, you're not going to cut the wire. Um, you're going to cut this piece. It's then going to be free 
off the uh, end here. So this is our final length. You got this piece here. I just take uh, dikes carefully, kind of get in there and snip this thing. It's hard plastic, you know, you're gonna break it. It's gonna end up being some pieces like that. Um, get that piece out of there. Then slide your boot back down onto your new length here. Uh, reinstall the rubber cap from that end and you end up with a wire that is the correct length for your Yamaha cylinder head. So uh, the v reason I like these VMSs is that this rubber boot is like perfect. Um, I'll show you one over here. So it's not solid around the insulator. You, know, you can see it's hollow right here if that thing was sticking up through there. So that allows these to squish pretty good. The MSD ones are solid rubber um, and they don't fit into the bore ID of the valve cover. Um, I have used those, but you have to machine the valve cover to make them fit. These you don't have to, they go right in. Um, ID of the outer ring is pretty much identical to a Yamaha. So, you know, that thing goes right on there, keeps all the dirt and water and sand and stuff out of there. So, and these are good quality wires. They come from, uh, I bought this set on Amazon. So just a China made wire, but um, they work really good. Here's the part number of this set that I am working on right now. About 70 bucks. Um, let's see, and then once you've done this and you have, you know, got your boot back down here, you got this, this end of it reassembled, this thing is now the right length. Um, you gotta use, uh, there's two styles of boot you can use here. This is, let's see, I wrote the part number down. Uh, MSD standard spark plug 90, uh, MSD 8850. I like these, they go all the way down onto the coil. Um, you know, like that thing pretty much bottoms out and they hold on really good. Coils are technically designed for like an HEI style boot, which I got some here, um, which is this guy, you know, which is, it's got the same ferrule on the inside, which you can't really see, but the boot is shorter. So that's the HEI style boot. Let's see if I can clip it on there. Um, these work good too. This is what I have been running. It's technically the right boot for this coil pack, but I, I like this MSD one better. Like this thing, these things go on there. You really gotta shove it down on there and, and it holds on really good. So MSD kit uh, comes with, you gotta buy a set of eight, unfortunately, but they're, they're like $30. So not too outrageously expensive. Comes with the silicone boots. Comes with the ferrules for the ends of the wire. Um, you will get some instructions that say how you are supposed to crimp this thing. Um, let's see if we can open it up. So it explains that crimp. Um, and I think, if I remember correctly, it comes with this little tool. This little tool gives you this side uh, thickness here to put the plug wire in and trim the outside of the insulator off with a razor blade. Also gives you a crimper. You know, this thing goes in your vise and you crimp it with a vise to crimp that wire. Um, those work pretty good. I've used those a lot over the years on jet ski and, you know, other applications of MSD wires. Um, I prefer the crimp tool. Uh, you know, this thing's, I want to say it's about 140 bucks. Um, I do a lot of these, so tool makes sense. It's got the stripper built in. It's got the crimper for the uh, spark plug wire ferrule. And then it's got the uh, other little end there that crimps the contactor on the end of the ferrule, which is explained in the in instructions. This thing comes with instructions too. So overkill way to do it, cheap way to do it. Both of them work just fine. You're gonna crimp, go through this instruction. Um, obviously figure out what your wire length needs to be because you're gonna get four of these wires that are, you know, this probably was the longest one, but there are four different lengths for a Honda 
Honda car uh, engine with a distributor on the side. So um, you won't need that much wire. You're gonna cut it down to whatever length you need for wherever your coil is. Originally I had the coils up on top of the valve cover, um, moving them up here as part of this bracket that mounts this, uh, let's see if I can get a better view, intercooler um, thingy that I'm working on here. So I'm putting them up here just to get them out of the way and have better accessibility. You know, I like, I like to keep all of this side of the motor open so I can get in here and uh, work on spark plugs or whatever without taking the whole car apart. So that's my thought of moving the coils to right here. Um, just integrated that bracket into this uh, other mount that holds the intercooler in place. So figure out your wire length for whatever, wherever you're putting them. A lot of guys put them back here um, out of the way. You can put them on this frame tube. They, you know, there's companies that sell clamps to mount these coils. Um, really wherever you want to put it. But then once you have your coils mounted and you got your first uh, phase of the wire done, that lower insulator, bring that wire over to the coil. Um, give yourself about an extra inch of length past the stud because you're going to trim that wire and there's a little core wire on the inside of this big wire that gets folded over and inserted into the uh, ferrule. And so just to accommodate for that, and just say roughly an inch, that'll give you plenty. Um, get your uh, crimp ferrule on there and that just shoves into this boot and then that goes onto your coil and you're essentially done. So hopefully that is good information. Um, I'm going to be referring people to this video rather than having this conversation on the phone. <laughs> but uh, good luck with your builds, guys. Um, if you need something, feel free to reach out. Give me a call, whatever. Uh, if you just need some tech advice, uh, I do my best to answer everybody's questions. So hope everybody has a good Friday. Talk soon. Bye.